Hello and welcome back to my channel In Search of Wonder. My name is Anne and earlier this week I shared with you the top nonfiction books that I bet you had never heard of before. Today we have the best fiction books, I guess, that you probably have never heard of before. Let's find out, shall we? So, my hair, my bangs are doing this strange, like, twisty thing right there. That piece right there. Why? I don't know. Never did it before. Did it this morning and couldn't fix it. So, I'm sorry. Hopefully it doesn't annoy you as much as it annoys me. Okay, so, the best books that you've never heard of. Probably. We'll see. Again, like the video earlier this week, let me know. I would, I'm really curious which of these books you have heard of, which of them you have read. I'll be a monkey's uncle if you've read all of them. So let's start with the list and see if they are as uh, unusual as I think they are. First of all, this book is called, and I don't have a physical copy of it, Wired Love by Ella Cheever Thayer, I think is her last name. And I'm not sure that she wrote any other books. Um, I'll have to do, I'll have to dig in and see if I can find any others. I think maybe she wrote one or two more, but um, really this was the one, like her one hit wonder, so to speak, as far as I know. Anyway, um, but it's set in the time of when um, telegrams were very popular. So it was like eight, late 19th century, early 20th century, maybe, <clears throat> maybe a little bit earlier than that. But um, it is two telegraph operators who are communicating with each other sight unseen via their... Um, Telegraphs. That's what it, why? Okay, suddenly, suddenly I'm not remembering the words. Telegraph operator makes a telegram. Yes? Why don't I know this? All of a sudden, I don't know things that I think that, like, I've known all my life. But anyways, telegraph operators, anyway, they start communicating with each other, sight unseen and they don't know each other. So it's kind of like the very first technology version of, or of um, you've got mail kind of story. So they're communicating long distance, sight unseen. They don't know each other. They're in different towns. And um, long story short, spoiler alert, they fall in love. It's a romance novel. But it was it's, it's not a historical fiction novel. It was written in the day, but it reads like a contemporary novel. And the girl in the story, I think it's a girl, yeah, she lives in a boarding house. And what I found just as fascinating as the actual story, which was very well written, what I found just as interesting as the actual story was like her daily life, like the daily life of a single girl in kind of middle class, America, um, earning a living, but living her, you know, her best single life at the time. It was so interesting. I loved it. And um, falling a lot in love along the way. And it was just so like, I could totally, uh, I read it after I was married and had kids and everything. But um, her descriptions of, you know, having her friends over into her boarding house and the way they, you know, made to do with her little room to have I think they had like a Thanksgiving dinner together or something they had some kind of holiday meal together and you know she just described how they you know had this makeshift table and they all crowded around it and the, the dishes they each brought and they had to set this dish over here on top of this random piece of furniture because there wasn't room on the table I don't know that scene just sticks out vividly in my mind because it just it was just so real and so like normal people but 150 years ago. Um, so anyway, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, a little bit funny. The, the romance was so 
Um, so cute. I need to read it again because it was just, it was a fun read. And I don't think that I've read any other um, classic. I mean, it's not like a well-known classic, but it was written a hundred and some years ago. I don't think I've ever read anyone that was that was so accessible and felt so modern to me. Probably was written, I'm going to guess, early 1900s, very late 1800s. I should have looked that up before I made this video, but research is not my strong suit. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Okay, uh, then another one, also from around the same time period, um, O.E. Jigs and Juleps by Virginia Carey Hudson. Now, I find this hard to believe, but the girl was apparently 10 years old when she wrote this. And she wrote them for her uh, composition class, I believe, at her school, the private school that she attended. And it, so it's really just a series of essays that she was assigned to write on a variety of topics. And it's so stinking hilarious, but also quite the precocious and perceptive look at humanity and the foibles of humanity and the people that she knew in her small town. Um, I'm not sure if it's like their real names or everything, but so funny. And um, it's a little bit hard to find, like you can find old copies of it online. Um, at some point it was readily available like to download and read, but I couldn't find it on Project Gutenberg and I couldn't find the, the free PDF version that I had read at some point. So, um, and I didn't see it at my local library. So it's a little bit trickier to find, but, and it's just a short little book, but so funny. So, so worth reading and a really quick read. Um, then another one is... It has a it goes by a couple of different names. So you might find it as the autobiography of a Turkish girl in English, or the Wren is the literal English translation of the Turkish name of the book. Tur the Turkish is, I don't know, I don't speak Turkish. It's like Çalıkışu, Çalıkışu, Çalıkışu. Yeah, I don't speak, I don't speak that language. So I don't know how to say it. And the letters, they look like Latin-ish, English-ish letters, but I don't think they say the things that we say. So yeah, I don't know how to say it, but it starts with something that looks like a C, but it's not a C. I think it makes such sound. But anyway, it means the Wren. And it is a, set in Turkey. And it is about a girl, a school girl. And she, but she's like in high school. And she's falling in love. This, I mean, this is a little weird, but again, set back like 1800s, early 1900s. And when this was fairly common, also totally different culture. So it's a little bit easier to, to take, I guess. But anyways, falls in love with her older cousin um, because she is living with her family. Like she's not living with her parents. Her aunt and uncle, I believe, are raising her and um, until she is old enough to be on her own and her older cousin also lives there and so it's kind of like a, like they were just friends like really good friends all growing up but then at some point he realized that she was um, you know she was all grown up I mean she was like 17 16 17 18 or something years old in the story and um, so there's there's like a scandal involved um with a with the guy in the story because honestly he's not really like an ideal hero sort of guy um but it was still very interesting i had never read anything by a turkish author before ha uh, the first name is risat i believe but i can't remember what the rest of the name is but i'll put all the info a picture up on the screen and maybe a couple different versions of the book Back when I wanted to read it in English, I had a very difficult time finding a copy of it. And I ended up finding like, like a PDF that I downloaded and read, um, that came in like two parts, like a Google doc sort of thing. But nowadays I believe that someone has put an English translation available for Kindle to purchase. So you can find it on Kindle and buy it. Um, so this, the reason I ever even heard of this story was because <laughs> okay, it's a little bit silly. Okay. 
so don't judge me, all right? So back in the day, I used to have Netflix. I don't have Netflix anymore, but I used to have Netflix, and every now and then I would have binge watched something on there, and there I binge watched this <laughs> Turkish soap opera. <laughs> This does not sound like me. Wow, but it was me. I did it. I really did it. Anyway, a Turkish soap opera that uh, I watched and I just got totally sucked into it. And I don't rem remember how many seasons it had on Netflix. I watched the first several, how many of it was. And I was just totally sucked into it and was like, watching it like I finished one and watch the next one. I guess I didn't have a life back then. But anyways, um, I love this story. And then when I realized it was based on an actual like classic Turkish book that all people in Turkey, you know, like they read it in high school or whatever. I was like, oh, I want to read this. So interesting. And the book was really good. Um, the book, in fact, was better than the than the soap opera TV series, whatever you want to call it, because the TV series, I stopped watching it after a certain season. I can't remember which one because the guy, the, the guy in the story, he just got like obsessive, extremely overly jealous, controlling. And then it became a situation where I, a relationship that was toxic, but yet it was still being portrayed as romantic and ideal and I was I was a little ick by that so I stopped watching and I was like yeah but I think by that point I had already read the book I read it shortly after that and the book was not like that the I don't remember it being like that let's put it that way definitely the melodrama tv series the first couple seasons or whatever are pretty good but then it derails and you're like mm, okay I just, I don't like it, but the book I liked. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. So another one I read, um, I believe that this was maybe independently published, not 100% sure, but it's called The Beloved Daughter by Alana Terry. And it was, I, I went on a kick where I was reading all kinds of things about North Korea. And I read several memoirs of people who had left North Korea and defected to South Korea or somewhere else and um, found them very interesting. And then I found this, this fiction book about um, a kind of along a similar line, but it is about a girl who grows up in a Christian family in North Korea and the persecution that she and her family experience and how her faith grows and everything. But can you see what my mug says? It may not be Pemberley, but it's home. <laughs> One of my sisters gave it to me for Christmas a couple years ago. Anyway, The Beloved Daughter by Alana Terry. So good. So well written. Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't often read indie published novels unless I get very good recommendations for them. Honestly, I don't read many books unless they come well recommended because... I feel like um, I don't want to waste my time. I guess like time is valuable. So I want to know it's going to be a book I really like. But on the other hand, as evidenced by this video, there are plenty of books that I just hear about randomly. And I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll read that. And I do. And I love it. So, you know, there's a balance, I guess. But this one, I don't even know. I think it was just because I was on that North Korea kick and I saw it and I saw that it got good reviews. And I thought, oh, like I'd like to read it. So. I did and it was very good and I highly recommend um, intense very intense for sure so it's not a light read it's not an easy read it will challenge you and it will convict you and it will probably make you cry in more than one place and you may have to set it down and come back to it sometimes but very good all the same um, and then another one I've mentioned a couple times on this channel uh, just because it's such it's it's so me first of all, which you'll understand why when I show it to you, but also, um, I don't know, so fun. Like, I don't know, I just really like this book. So it's called Old Friends and New Fancies by Sybil G. Brinton. Also, I don't know another author, I don't know that she wrote anything else. I'll have to look into that, but this is her 
basically Jane Austen fan fiction and she writes a whole book about the characters in um, all of Jane Austen's novels and she kind of ties them all together in this nice neat, nice, neat knot of a story kind of after their stories ended. Um, and just so fascinating and very well written, um, written in 1913. So about a hundred years after Austen herself was writing and um, I really, really enjoyed it. I don't remember a great deal about it. So I'll have to read it again to see if my first impressions hold true, but I did enjoy it the first time through that I read it. And it, this is one of the ones that I'm mentioning that is readily available. I think I got it on Thrift Books. Um, yep, it still has the sticker. I got it on Thrift Books, not too much money. So um, a really nice copy actually. So um, yeah, there's that one. Another one is, um, I think I may have mentioned this. I did. I mentioned this in my Regency um, uh, Books Are Like Coffee episode. So I will link to that below, um, but I want to mention it again. So this is the author Patricia Varian, and uh, she wrote in uh, like the 70s, 80s, 90s, she was writing. This one is copyright 1985. And she wrote mostly Georgian uh, books set in the Georgian era and some in the Regency era. And um, the Georgian ones deal a lot with the Jacobite Rebellion and that kind of thing. And um, they're all they're all romance novels, but they all also have like some kind of mystery or adventure sort of story happening. And um, this one is one of my favorites of hers because it's so funny. Like it has laugh out loud moments that just um, like honestly make me belly laugh and I've read it a couple of times and it makes me laugh every time um so it's this girl Charity and this guy Mitchell Redmond and she has escaped the clutches of the evil Frenchman and she is in no mood to endure the boorish behavior of arrogant Mitchell Redmond when he appears but they end up um on this uh journey not really a journey, like they're being, they're being kind of chased, I guess, through, um, and they, they're like crunched for time and they're trying to escape somebody, whatever, and they're thrust together on this trip um, to escape the clutches of all the evil Frenchmen. And they end up crossing the border into Scotland. And even though it's a dangerous, perilous situation and there's, um, there's much adventure along the way, uh, it's also, Quite humorous and lots of laughter goes on very funny so and also she's really good at writing swoony but clean romance stories that so if you like that sort of thing um, closed door and if you like that in a romance novel then you will probably like that and those I think are pretty easy to find like on thrift books or possibly at your library um, it's part of a series now it it will stand alone, but it might work better if you read it in the whole series. The Sanguine series is what it's called, I think. Well, it doesn't say what the series is, so I guess it's not super important, but it's the Sanguine Saga. That's what it is. The series is called the Sanguine Saga, and there are several books that are like strictly part of the series, and that's one of them, but then there are others that are kind of like have characters from that series in it, um, kind of an ancillary um stories that coordinate with that series but aren't strictly part of it and they're all good like I like almost almost all of them I like a lot almost all of Patricia Varian's books and then um one that I read um when I was a teenager uh I think it was one of my mom's favorite Christian fiction books and it was written more during her era like in the 60s or 70s and um she had all of us read it because she thought it was really good that she had enjoyed it and she wanted us to read it also. It was called Not My Will by Francina Arnold and it is a very Christian, Christian fiction. So um, it's not one that was just, you know, published by a Christian fiction publishing company. 
and you know where the characters might go to church or they might talk about God or they might learn something it's re it's very Christian in its essence in the story and what happens and in the main themes or whatever basically the theme is surrender and surrendering your will to God's will for your life and um, in this story the main character is a very stubborn girl and she does not want to surrender her will to God's will she wants to live her own life the way she wants and so consequently she has many many things happen that are the bad result of the choices that she makes and then um, finally her will is broken and she surrenders to God and um, then you know it's how her her life improves after that which I've seen some people reviewing saying that you know it, it's a it's kind of promoting a bit of a false idea of Christianity that if you just you know do things according to God's will everything will go perfectly I don't think that's what the author's trying to say I think the author's just trying to say that um, that doing things willfully apart from God's will for your life will not go well for you and that's just a reality and that you will have at the very least much more peace and joy and settledness in your heart if you are doing things God's way or you're living God's will for your life even if not everything is going perfectly it may not all go perfectly for you but your heart will be will be well your your life may be still struggling but your heart will be well you will be able to withstand whatever life gives you if you are in God's will if you are surrendered and submitted to God's will and I think that that is that is so true so um, I didn't take issue with the messaging on the book but then again it's been a long time since I've read it so if I reread it I may think differently uh, but it's definitely I think worth reading um, it, it was impactful for me as a teenager and uh, I recommend it based on what I recall about it um, and then the last one that I want to show you um, is, uh, is actually a trilogy, but each book has to go like the, none of them are standalone. So you have to read the whole series in order or, or it's really basically like one book and three parts. And I have the first one, which is called Born of Persuasion by Jessica Dada. And I read this series I started with the first book. Um, I think I may have had, I got it like free on Kindle or whatever. I got to the end of the first book and I was like, I must read the second book. And I can't remember if I was able to borrow it from the library or I, I think I, I think I borrowed it from the library, but they only had the, the audio version. So I read the audio version of it or listened to the audio version of the second book in the series. And then I was like, I must read the third book in this series now. I have to know how it ends. And so I actually bought the third book for Kindle because I so badly wanted to read it. And let me tell you, at that time in my life, I was dirt poor and I did not have money to be spending on full price Kindle books, but I had to read it, so I did. I don't regret the money that I spent on it whatsoever. So good. And can I tell you, can I tell you that when I got to the end of the third book, I went back to the first book and I read the entire series again immediately. I have never done that in my life before. I doubt I will ever do it again. I mean, it could happen. It happened once. It could happen again, but I doubt it. It was that good. So I have read it three times now. And each time I was like, that was so good. I don't know if I read it again, if I would feel the same way. Uh, but I did those three times. I did, I did tell one of my sisters all about it and she read it and she did not love it as much as I did. In fact, I'm not sure that she even finished the whole thing. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. So not everybody's going to love it like I loved it, but oh my goodness one of my favorite books ever. And not only was it a good story, well-written, um, and just a compelling story, but such a beautiful, such a beautiful, but you have to get to the end to see it, beautiful picture of redemption. And um, I love it so much. So I don't want to spoil anything um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about it and then, um, 
And I'll tell you that what, what I know for sure that some people don't like about it is they, they can't get past the main character and her character issues because she does have them. She is purposely drawn as a stubborn and willful girl who um, very often does exactly the opposite of what she should do. And you as the reader are sitting there going, girl, just don't do that. No, don't go there. Go there. Do that thing. Which, by the way, you know, somebody has already told her she should. She's just, she's frustrating in that way. So I get that. But hang in there because she is, there are two reasons why I think that you should, if you read the book and she's driving you crazy and you're like, I don't want to read anymore about this girl driving me crazy. First of all, I'm going to say this with all of the love in my heart. You need to look in the mirror because as you are reading this story, the best way to get the most out of it is to see yourself as her in the story. Okay. So you are the main character. And if you are honest and it might take a dose of humility, you will probably admit that you are just as stubborn and willful at heart as she is. So that's the first thing. The second thing is she does grow. She grows and she changes and there are things that happen that, that change her. And, um, that part is just really beautiful. But in order for that to be beautiful, you have to see her at her worst. So it's worth it. I promise. If you can read it all the way to the end and if you can read it with eyes open to, to what the story is trying to tell you. So anyway, one of my favorite books ever, uh, let me just give, describe real quick, um, exactly like, you know, what this, what the story is about. Um, yeah. So the year is 1838 and 17 year old Julia Elliston's position has never been more fragile, orphaned and unmarried in a time when women are legal property of their fathers, husbands, and guardians. She finds herself at the mercy of an anonymous guardian who plans to establish her as a servant in far off Scotland. With two months to devise a better plan, Julia's first choice to marry her childhood's childhood sweetheart is denied. Then a titled dowager offers to introduce Julia into society, opening a realm of possibilities. Treachery and deception are as much a part of Victorian society as titles and decorum, however, and Julia quickly discovers her present is deeply entangled with her mother's mysterious past. Before she knows what's happening, Julia finds herself a pawn in a deadly game between two of the country's most powerful men. With no laws to protect her, she must unravel the secrets on her own. But sometimes, truth is elusive and knowledge is deadly. So, that is... Now I want to read it again. I think I might read it again for Remember December. Or if I can't wait that long, I might read it again for Historicon because you know it's historical fiction. So, hmm. anyways, that is um, one of my favorite, definitely one of my favorite Christian fiction books that I've ever read. And I, I included it on this video because that author, this was her one and only series of books that she has published. And um, she's doing other things as far as I know, she's pursued other careers since she wrote that one. It was like this big story on her heart and um, that had been on her heart for a long time and she wrote it. And it was very well received at the time, but because there's never been any other books written by her and that's been a few years, yeah, about 10 years ago, she wrote that series. Um, and she never wrote anything else. So that one's kind of like faded. Um, and only, I think a handful of people, um, have still, still, you know, remember it. And, um, it's not one that's commonly talked about or raved about nowadays. So, 
some of you who are big Christian fiction fans may have read it when it came out 10 years ago. If so, I'd love to know your thoughts about it because I don't know many people who have actually read it. And I just think it's such a fantastic book or series of books. So anyway, those are my top um, fiction books that uh, you probably have never heard of. Have you heard of any of these besides from me? So mentioned a couple of them on other videos, but have you heard of them from someone other than me? Have you read them? Did you like them? Would you recommend them to other people? Are any of them that sound intriguing to you that you would like to find and buy and read for yourself? Let me know in the comments and we'll keep chatting about it. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day or evening, whatever you are, wherever you are. And I will see you next time.